In Apollo 11 an alarm occurred in the descent of the lunar module that the astronauts were knowing nothing about, and that even the ground had difficulty to find what it was about. In fact this alarm would have been caused by parasites on the radar input which made the computer jam and restart. When the radar mode switches on the position, LGC, according to the description in the anomalous section, there are two phased signals which ensure that the AGC will receive normal radar pulses. But when the radar mode is on the position, slew still according to the description in the anomalous section, there are two deepest signals which make that the AGC receives very fast abnormal radar pulses, instead of the slow normal ones. These are not at all parasites, these are intentionally created fast radar pulses that the engineers perfectly knew that they would happen when the radar mode was on the position, slew. At the moment that the alarm happened in the descent of Apollo 11, the radar mode switch was on this position. In all systems, including the one of the Saturn rocket, hardware pulses are always counted by electronic counters. The computer has a special instruction which allows it to read data values on physical ports. And the computer of the lunar module had a such instruction. It would have allowed it to read the count of pulses on the electronic counter coding the radar pulses. If the AGC had proceeded that way, the fast radar pulses would not have made the computer jam. The computer would just have seen that it was reading an abnormal high count of pulses and could have said what the problem was about. Instead of that the engineers had had the weird idea of making the processor count itself the radar pulses and also the ones coming from the IMU, and of course, counting these pulses was delaying the execution of the currently running task. Each time a radar pulse was occurring, just after the current instruction had been completed, a special instruction was automatically executed to count the incoming radar pulse before the next instruction of the currently running task was executed, which was thus delaying its execution. This special instruction was not made available to a programmer, it was uniquely dedicated to counting hardware pulses and was executed independently of the currently running program. Each two seconds, a guidance task was spawned, which means that the previous guidance task absolutely had to finish executing before the limit of two seconds, otherwise the next guidance task could not immediately start, and would have to wait for the currently running guidance task to finish its execution. The radar pulses randomly delay the execution of the guidance task, but they are not fast enough to prevent the guidance task from finishing its execution in time. But when the fast radar pulses occur, they delay more the execution of the guidance task than normal radar pulses. The processor takes more time to execute it. The consequence is that, while normal pulses were not preventing the guidance task from finishing in time, before the limit of two seconds, abnormal fast radar pulses delay it enough to make it go over the limit of two seconds. The result is that quite often, when the next guidance task is started, the previous one has not finished executing, and thus must be put on the waiting list. However when it is started it is allotted memory resources which decrease the available quantity of memory resources. Because the problem of the fast radar pulses persists, and the guidance tasks keep not finishing in time, there are more and more guidance tasks which are started and cannot execute because there is a guidance task still running, and thus are put on the waiting list of tasks waiting to be executed. Each of these tasks has been allotted memory resources when it has been started. It means that the available quantity of memory resources decreases more and more, till there remains no more available memory resource. When a new guidance task is started, and at that moment, the AGC gets stuck, it can no more normally run. An alarm has to be displayed, and the computer has to be restarted to be able to work again. But that's the whole problem. 
in order to run the alarm task also needs memory resources, and it is precisely started because there are no more memory resources left. So this alarm task is to warn about a problem which prevents itself from running. It is the snake biting its tail. Now how wish the restart of the computer managed? At regular points of the running program called waypoints, all the data of the program was saved in memory. In case that the AGC had to restart, it was going back from the point it got stuck to the closest waypoint. Then it was reloading in the data of the program all the data which had been saved at this waypoint. And it was resuming the execution of the program from this waypoint, which means that it was executing again all the instructions between this waypoint and the point where it was restarted. It may seem smart, and some have even called it ingenuous, but it is not at all. It is completely absurd and here is why. Some imagine that saving the program's data and memory is instantaneous, but it is not at all, far from it. Saving the program's data means making plenty of memory accesses, to read the program's data and write them in other locations of the memory. It takes a hell of a time because the memory accesses of the AGC are rather slow, and also it wastes memory, because a part of the memory is to be reserved to save the data. So a computer like the one of the AGC, which has a very small computing power, and also a small amount of available memory. Because it is not the core rope memory which can only be read and not written, it is the dynamic memory which can also be written and the AGC did not have much of it. Would have used the procedure which was wasting time and memory, in an insane way. Could have the restart of the computer have been made in a more rational way? Yes it could. The most obvious solution would have had to just drop all the waiting guidance tasks, which anyway will never be executed, for they are too late, so that the memory resources they have been allotted can return, to the pool of available memory resources. And the execution of the guidance task would simply resume from the current instruction with the current data, which poses no problem since the address of the currently running instruction is constantly stored in the program counter. No waste of time and memory, clean and efficient. And of course the astronauts also would have to put the radar mode switch back on a normal position, the LGC position which is allowing to send normal radar pulses to the AGC. Otherwise the problem would persist, and the guidance tasks would keep not finishing in time, with the result of the lunar module not being correctly guided. Sure it would have been much simpler for the astronauts, if the displayed alarm had told them exactly what to do to solve the problem, and allow the guidance to work normally again. The AGC was supposed to be a multitasking system. But this is a big laugh when we see how this multitasking system was working. Normal multitasking systems manage the swapping of tasks automatically. In the AGC, it was up to the programmer to make this management. Indeed the programmer was instructed to insert in his program at regular sufficiently close intervals, a sequence of instructions allowing to test if a task with more priority had been started and at that case, this test sequence was allowing the task with more priority to replace the currently running task. After the task with more priority has finished its execution, the task which has been interrupted resumes its execution from the point it has been interrupted. It means that a task with a high priority cannot be executed before the currently running task has reached a test sequence inserted in the program. That's why the programmers were advised to insert this test sequence frequently enough. If a programmer was omitting to insert these test sequences in his program, it means that his program could not be interrupted by a task with a higher priority, which means that there was no protection against a such omission. It means that when we scan the programs of the AGC, and NASA has published some examples of programs, we should find these test sequences in these programs, 
and yet they are nowhere to be found. There is not a single occurrence of this test sequence in the programs of the AGC. So we can wonder how a task with a higher priority could run. Anyway, in view of the fact that the memory of the AGC had been incorrectly mounted, all these problems are not very important and change hardly anything. The AGC could have as well walked on its hands. Walk, baby, walk. But we all know that God assisted the astronauts to land on the moon and gamble on it. 